If you're ready to walk in authority, help finding your purpose and destiny, empowering you to live today. Right into the word this morning and uh, today we're going to be starting back there, uh, Minister Rob, on page 12. Uh, uh, our David, who's ever back there, on page 12 of our notes. I'm not going to spend a lot of time in review. I'm going to get uh, right into this series uh, uh, of teaching. Of, I'll introduce a little bit, but what I'm going to do, I'm going to teach on, Dr. Price refers to it as a flip-flop method. Uh, uh, it's actually a method of teaching. It's not something he invented. It's actually called in directional proportional relationship of understanding. In other words, you, you look at one side of understanding, then you look at the other side of understanding, and you merge the two. And you do that by a matter of proofing. In other words, not just what you say, but what it doesn't say. You take what it says versus what it doesn't say, and you take the difference in the extraction, and you have what it is. It's kind of like an algebraic function, so to speak. And so we're going to be doing that because we're talking about the mind. And the reason we're doing that, because we're going to have to compare the inner you versus the outer you, and we need to understand really, really uh, how we think, but not only how we think, but be prepared to make a decision in our life and with our life to cause our thinking to go to a whole nother level. Uh, what is the title of our subject? Anybody know? Mental readiness for success. You know, uh, I give God all the glory and all the praise in the times in which we're living in and what our nation's going through, our government and everything else. Uh, you don't tell me you don't need to be ready mentally. C come on, somebody. Hallelujah. If you don't know, you know somebody that definitely does. But the fact of the matter, we all need to be ready mentally because we cannot predict what the future holds. And uh, uh, there's change on the horizon. God is a God of change. And, and oftentimes we see change happening and we go shocked like, oh, but whoa, oh, you know. But at the end of the day, life is about change. Are you with me? So we're going to go to uh, 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 Romans chapter 12, verse 1 through 3. We're going to look at this. And uh, our home text is out of Proverbs. And we said, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Uh, Proverbs also says, out of the issues of the heart cometh forth the issues of life, or out of the heart cometh forth the issues of life, same, same. But in Romans chapter 12, verse 1 through 3, we find a very, very powerful verse. We've said that you are a spirit, you have a mind, and you live in a body. When you come to the altar, you get saved, or however you give your life to Jesus Christ, your spirit man is sealed to the day of redemption. You still have this body that you got to get through in life because you need the body suit. It's a requirement. When God speaks, it becomes a law. And God created man in his own image and his own likeness. And so, therefore, God created us as male and female, but he put us, that's as the gender, but he put us as a species, man, into a body. So whatever you have to do on earth is, you know, you require to have an earth suit. However, let's talk about what God does not want to invest in. God really is not concerned with investing in your flesh. It's dying, it's decaying daily. He has given us the authority to stand on the word to keep the, the, uh, the body suit up as long as it can. But that's not his investment. Once you get saved, your spirit is sealed into the day of redemption. So there's no more work there to be done. That's complete. But where there is work to be done and where the work is to be done, where we win or lose is in the gateways of our mind. In Romans chapter 12, Paul is writing to the church at Rome. A little background in this situation, the church at Rome uh, you know, he had to come up against, and Paul's a very educated, very insightful man. He wasn't religious in, in any way. Paul was, was truly saved by the blood. He, he gave Jesus the glory at every turn. But he was educated enough, and I don't think there was anyone else in the Bible that could have wrote to the, to the people at Rome other than Paul. He had their respect. He could communicate on their level. He spoke 13 different languages. He could literally minister to the vast majority of Rome itself. They not only respected him, but they reverent his work. Amen. They reverent his work as a man of God and his work as a soldier. He had some integrity and character about himself. So Paul writes here to the Rome. He says, I beseech you, brethren, 
by the mercies of God that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice. He's telling us right away, present your bodies, the entire you as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Now, what he is saying here is that if there is something acceptable to God, then there must be something that is unacceptable in, 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 in proportional method of understanding here. So when we understand that there is something that God wants and what he wants is holy and what's acceptable unto God, which is what your reasonable, your reasonable. Now, when he says our reasonable service, he now points to how we're going to present our body as this living sacrifice. We're going to do it through service. We're going to do it through service. Well, we can't serve God with our bodies. God is not really interested. You know, you can do all the push-ups. You can bench press up to 600 pounds. That ain't going to impress God. But what you can do, and the only way you can serve God, is with your mind. That's when you surrender your mind to the spirit that he gave you. And when we do this, we become spiritually minded. Now we can present our mind to God. We can present our mind in such a way that he is pleased. And it can become holy and acceptable unto him, which is your reasonable service. Now notice what he does say. Let's look at what he tells us not to do. Be not conformed. Be not conformed to what? This world. Now, this word world is actually a word that is taken out of the Greek. And Paul, he used this term because the Romans would thoroughly understand what he's talking about. He was talking about the cosmos. He was talking about the world system that all of their philosophers and astrologers and everybody else had deemed so vital. I mean, you got to understand they had placed their whole life based upon the, the galaxies and the stars and the universe and so forth. They named gods. They had within Rome, within, within the halls of Rome, they had statues after goddesses, Greek goddesses, Tydorus and Gigantus and all of these other gods and so forth, Apollos that they worshipped. And so when we understand this, Paul now tells them when you are saved, that there's something on the inside of you that is so mighty, so awesome, so powerful, so wonderful that you can overcome. But the way you're going to have to overcome is to resist what you see in the natural senses and what you grew up and learned how to do in this world. You're going to have to deny the cosmos in the Greek and you're going to have to hold fast to the life or the zoe life of God. And so he says, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you might present what is good and acceptable unto God, which is your, what kind of service? Reasonable service, right? And not only does he say, don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So if I'm going to accomplish what Paul is talking about, it can't, it's not with my spirit alone. It's definitely not with my body, but the key element is what? My mind. That you might prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. And then he says, and I say unto you through the grace, through the what? Grace given unto me, that every man among you not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think what? Soberly. To think what? Soberly. According as God has dealt to every man a measure of faith. Say that with me. Faith. When I went back, and, and I do understand, there was a time I didn't, I do understand, it has a lot to do with the times and seasons in which we're living and, and what will come in these times and seasons in which we're living. But when I really got a hold of this revelation uh, of the mind, and, and it's, it's a shame when Christians, if I can say it this way, oftentimes, not all Christians, but many Christians, when they don't understand something, they, they oppose it or they come up against it. I had, I had, a, I had a brother ask me uh, just recently about a week or two ago. He says, Pastor, what do you think about motivational speakers? You know, because, you know, they, they, use, a lot of, they use a lot of Bible, but, you know, they, they call their books self-help. And, and is that ungodly? I had a Christian tell me that was ungodly. I said, well, as long as they're not trying to have themselves as God pointing to the self-help that you need. But yes, you do need to condition it and to educate your mind. And I'm not going to go through our notes in that area. But I, I think this is where the, where the church missed it. And so consequently, we try to put everything off on God or everything. We, you know, I'm just going to believe God. Yeah, it is. It does have a spiritual origin, but God wants us to give it some natural execution. 
And so consequently, you know, we, you know, the world prospers more in a natural realm than the body of Christ does, but that's because the world is more mentally ready to go, what they, go do what they need to do on Monday than the church is. And, and we want to say, let God do it. Come on, somebody, don't get quiet to me. Don't get quiet on me now. So watch this. Who he gave the authority to was the church. Who he gave the authority to is the church. I look at this world situation right now, and I say it's a shame that the church had not done what God told the church to do literally when this nation was founded. See, this thing, this thing didn't just happen. There was progressions to this thing happening. There was not a ministration. There was administrations. Are you listening to me? The church wasn't taking care of business. She was not mentally ready, mentally preparing for where we are. Look at your name and say, thanks be to God. But it's being done through his grace. Now, the good part is that his grace is and mercy is new. So, so you're never too late on God. God can turn the thing around. That, that's the good part, right? But, but see, we need to be mindful and, and, and need to be mindful about what it is that God wants us to do through the word. Churches got to quit wanting to be entertained in their community churches and want to learn in their community church. Watch this. You need to be ready. The banks ain't giving you no pass in the community. Huh? Instead, inst instead of being mindful and teaching the people, oh, we got pastors now, they're more interested in being on reality shows, oh, acting oh, like a... Come on now. Come on, pastor. It's embarrassing. Right. You need to deal with some real reality and start operating in some integrity and in some character and do what God told us to do. You got to think they want to make most of them black, too, out of all of it. <laughs> if we didn't have it hard enough already. Yeah, I said it. You can write me. You can send me letters. You ain't that far away. You can step if you want. I'll show you what real old school is, real old school. But I'll show you old school under the blood. I'll show you under, uh, old school under wisdom now. Like Paul said, I don't come to you enticing words and, 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 and dazzling accolades, but in a demonstration in the power of the Holy Ghost, that's where the people are set free. That's what we need to be pursuing. We need to, we need to have a, re if you're going to have a reality show, have it on prayer. Have it on something that can help somebody. Have it on giving. Have it on disaster preparedness, preparing people. Have it on job fairs. Get some folks some work. How about that? I'm sorry. I, I went off. I, I, I went off. I, I got diverted. I, I, you know, I made a statement. No, I'm going to take my time on this. I, I made a statement a couple of weeks ago, and I said, you know, we're going to go up to, because I'm on a coalition of churches here at the city of Rancho Cucamonga, which I'm very pleased to be on. Uh, we were going to go up in the mountains, and I prophesied, though, it was going to be too windy. I just know the weather as it is. Being a contractor, I constantly stay on the weather. So I knew we, chances are we weren't going to make it up there. But we did have a, a very successful uh, health fair here that day. Yeah. And I told, I told the members, they said, well, pastor, why are we all doing all this stuff right now? And, 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 and I told them, I said, it's our responsibility. Amen. See, I, I believe that if you don't serve your community, you don't have a right to the nonprofit status of the community. See, see the very fact that we are the church in the community says we ought to do things for the community. See, if you're busy doing the father's business and you ain't got time for all this jive and nonsense. 
reality show. You, you, you ought to be somewhere studying somewhere. Okay, let, let's move on. Let's move on. Okay, I'm going to say one more thing. I have those two, two more. And, and you know what? Watch this, watch this. And for those of you on watch TV, is it warm in here or is it me? Can you turn the heater off? Come on, y'all be mindful. Y'all got to learn how to operate the lights, the heaters. Let, come on. Turn it down. It's hot in here. Watch this. If you're going to watch TV, have enough sense not to let them just tell you anything. See, you can't go minister to gang bangers talking about you strapped. Oh, you get dealt with. No, this is real talk. The only way you get released from the game is if you back all the way out the game. You can't be flip-flopping. You get dealt with. But see, they, 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 you know, it's theatrical. That ain't what you're about anyway. You're about being an example of Jesus Christ. And I go to hood all the time. I don't need none of that anymore. That's my old life. I go to hood. I'm Pastor Chris. I'm not silk anymore. How you gonna be? How you gonna be say? Oh, still call me silk? Just call me. All right, here we go. For real, for real. We back on the lesson. For real. I'm just tired of walking around pink elephants in a room and nobody say nothing. All right, point number one, we're back to the mind. Get this series and really go over it because God wants us educated. God doesn't want us stupid. God doesn't want us, okay, that, that was too much of a hard word. My wife gets on me sometimes when I say certain things. He doesn't want us ignorant. Is that better? Did that sound better, Gloria? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> God does not want us ignorant. Paul said it. I would not have you ignorant, my brethren, concerning what? Spiritual things, namely the devil devices and how he operates. Amen. Okay. I must know and understand both my natural and spiritual makeup of the mind. Here I gave you this illustration. This is you. You have a mind. Right here, we're going to look at the brain. We're going to look at this from a scientific standpoint, which is a natural standpoint. And all science does is explain the natural reactions of what God gave us. God gave us some stuff, and, and it has a nature to it. Science uh, 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 describes how that nature operates, such as a lion roaring in the jungle. That's, that's the nature of the lion. But the word of God says, when I come into Christ, I literally get a whole new nature. Honestly, and I'm not mad at nobody, but that's why I took the time to say what I was saying a moment ago about these realities. See, we, we should have a new nature. Huh? I, I should have a whole new makeup. Meaning I should have a whole new way in which I think. So anyway, unfortunately or fortunately, we did not have lobotomies when we got saved. He didn't take our brain out. He let us keep it. But what God told us, but beware, Paul actually taught on the fact that understand that you have both a, watch this, you have a carnal mind and you have a spiritual mind. So I have the opportunity now to act spiritually minded. We're going to talk about some benefits on this. Those of you in our prayer and petition class, uh, tomorrow we're going to be talking about it. And I will address it a little bit, but not as in depth next Sunday. I'm going to talk about dreams and visions. You want to talk about a fertile area of, of spiritual impartation but if we're not spiritually minded we won't be able to discern it and Paul talks about that watch this I must know and understand both of these I must understand watch this I have a spiritual mind I have a spiritual mind and I have a carnal mind and a carnal mind and a spiritual mind are always battling David can you just get ready I'm a, I want that uh, illustration on the board of directors at the table uh, when you get it uh, just give me a shout and then we'll, we'll, we'll go to that all right Go to the next slide on this one, though, while you're trying to figure that out. Amen? Here, this is your mind. And I literally took the time to go and find illustrations 
and I won't get, get, spend much time in this, but there's actually areas in your brain that deals with certain things, such as when an individual have a stroke, they lose their speech and different things happen. You got it ready? Okay, we'll go there in a moment. Uh, when, when they lose their speech and their motor skills, that's because you've affected a certain part of the brain. The frontal lobe here, this particular area, it, it, it actually uh, generates verbs, verbs are action words. It's looking to the conscience mind, figuring out the information it got, how it's to react to it. And it reacts off of these words because these words are produced into pictures. And then we have the speaking words. In this area, the center, center of the cortex here, we find where this is the ability to speak words, articulation. This is where the subconscious and the conscious uh, flows together. Here we have the hearing of words, the hearing of words. This is where the subconscious and the conscious, yes, work together, but this is also has a link to the, a link to that, listen to me, a link to the spirit of man, or a link namely to the conscience, the conscience. And the devil wants to get to the conscience, and God wants to get to the conscience. Because if they can put it on your conscience where your values and your morals are generated and reinforced, then it will always overrule the subconscious and the conscious mind, be it naturally or spiritually. Are you with me? And then we said that it, 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 back here in the rear of the cortex here of the brain, this is where after all of this is done, it actually sees the words. It sees the words. You don't just hear words, but you see it. And I gave you an illustration about if I said fruit, uh, there's a picture, a picture of that fruit. If I said banana, you have, literally have a picture of a banana. Amen. Let's go to the uh, board of directors. Thank you. This is you. This is your mind. Your mind is one of the most powerful elements in the earth realm. As much as God would want to do, Satan would want to do, can't none of that ever happen in the earth as long as you're here and you occupy a body. What both? Light and dark need is your permission to make a mental decision. We must become mentally ready because I'm telling you, the vote, the influence is 24-7. It never stops. It never stops. The devil never stops casting thoughts, verbs, words. Are you with me? Hearing. So over here, here's God. And God always will speak through the spirit. God never, ever speaks to your flesh. God is not carnal, neither can he be carnal. God is spirit, and those who worship him are those who must say, who have relationship. Another word for worship is just relationship. Those who have relationship with God must have it in spirit and in truth. <coughs> Here is Satan. And Satan always want to come through the flesh. He wants to come through that carnal mind. The devil wants to, the devil wants to come through the carnal mind the old mind, and then God wants to come through your spirit mind, your new mind, and then ultimately it's up to you to make a conscience decision. You see, all of this is happening and going on at the table. Satan influences the flesh, that rear area of the brain, the conscience. It goes on the table for discussion. Spirit of God brings to you the word of God. He drops it into conscience. It's a law. It goes on the table. Now the conscious mind looks to what was last on the table or what most recently you have been through in your life. Listen to this carefully. Because what, has, what you have gone through most recently in your life is in the forefront of your subconscious. But what the devil and what God both wants to get accomplished is often in the rear of your subconscious. This is why your greatest challenges and what the devil tries to keep you focused on, he likes to kind of keep you there, really, because that's where most of your present challenges, trials, and tribulations occur. So if he can keep you looking at the front of the table, he never allows you to see the banquet that's prepared at the back of the table. Huh? That's why we must understand those things which are temporal are temporal, and those things which are eternal is eternal. And God says, set our heart not upon temporal things, but upon eternal things. For the eternal things are the weight of glory. All right, let's go back now to our original uh, slide, please. Can we go to the next one? Thank you. Here. For though we walk in the flesh, 2 Corinthians 10 and 3 through 6. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not what? War after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. To the pulling down of what? Strongholds. To the pulling down of what? 
Strongholds is what's in the front of that table. That's what's in the front of your subconscious. It's the stronghold because it's tied, watch this, it's tied to your present situation. See, a stronghold is what you can't see beyond. When I look to my conscience, where my values are, what the word of God says I am, I can get beyond my stronghold. A stronghold is an illegitimate, unproductive train of thought. And so the devil wants you to keep on. That's why when you have a problem, the devil wants you to just keep thinking about that problem. Keep thinking about that problem. Keep thinking about that problem. But your breakthrough is to get that problem off your mind. Oh, listen to me, listen to me. I don't care what you're going through. You got one objective this morning. Get it off your mind. That problem is not the only problem in your life. It might be one. But it ain't the only one. And how you choose to deal with that is going to ultimately determine your outcome. Now, he goes on and says, how do I deal with it? And this, this is where it gets good. I don't know how I, I, I was alluding to this before I got distracted within myself earlier. <laughs> I don't know how we were teaching on faith except for it being the times that we're in. And so God wants to give us an apostolic word or now word for, for these end times. But I don't know how we miss proper teaching. I'll just want to say that it was, you know, motivational or it was just something somebody else teach and it didn't belong in the church. I, I think if you can just get people to put everything off on God and, and then put you in a position to say that you're the only one that can hear from God, then you can kind of keep people in bondage. Maybe that's it. I don't know. Maybe you can rule people like that. <laughs> but the word of God says, who the son sets free, sets free in, indeed. And, and, and so I think if we spent more time teaching on the mind while we were developing our teaching in faith, the church would have been more balanced. The church would have been more successful. People would have been able to handle themselves and their families a little bit better. And we would not have been so much in what we're in now as a whole. But he says, I've got to learn how to do what? Cast down these imaginations and every high thing that exalt itself against the knowledge of God. And bringing what? Bringing what? Bringing into captivity every what? Every what? Thought and what? Both the conscious and subconscious. Every thought to the what? So my objective is no matter what I'm thinking about, no matter what's on the table, I've got to make it line up with what God said that I should make it line up with. Or whatever God's word says is, my objective is to make sure whatever is happening in my life line up with what God said. Now, he says something very interesting in verse 6, many of us miss. Having a what? Ready. Having a what? Ready. This is why we're teaching on readiness of the mental mind for success. Having a readiness to do what? Ready. To revenge what? All disobedience. All disobedience. Unto what? Your obedience is fulfilled. And so watch this. When thoughts come to my mind and they want to rise up against what God said, I got to deal with that thought until that thought bows to what God's thought said. That's why he says, let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus. In other words, if, if you hear on the news, they talking about, well, they're going to shut everything down. Things are so dark. You ain't going to have no food. You ain't going to have no water next week. You got to say, wait a minute. I'm a giver. I'm a believer of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. That don't look like my God. Now, I understand that's what they see in the conscious realm. That's what you see. I'm not asking you to deny what you see. I'm talking about you denying what you will agree with what you see if it doesn't line up with what God's word says. And I'm, I'm here to tell you right now, you better make up your mind. Make up your what? Mind whose side you're on. The word of God says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so because it's going to be with your words, with your words that you feed your mind. Remember we learned life and death is in the power of the tongue and those that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. So I must understand every word that I hear, every word that I speak, it enters into the spiritual and the mental of digestive system of man. I've got to digest that stuff mentally. That's why you can't hang around negative and condescending people. And at the end of the day, you got to digest that stuff. Yeah, I'm talking about, I'm talking about cousin, uncle, Ray Ray, and all the rest of them. You got to make a decision. I didn't say you couldn't love them. 
But I'm saying, you, you got to get from up under that stuff, manipulating people. They got to get their little core group in.